Okay, welcome back folks. It's time for a quick 223 video today. In my last couple videos in the comments section, a guy named K Mark has been asking me to test the 53 grain Hornady VMAX. So I went into my bullet stockpiles and found a box of the 53 grain VMAX. The problem is that I only have 12 of them. So what I wanna do is go ahead and shoot a couple groups with these guys. We'll shoot three four shot groups. Maybe that'll be enough to uh, give us an indication as to whether this bullet is going to agree with my gun. And if the groups are decent, maybe we'll order a box and do a couple more videos. So that's only 12 shots. To fill out the rest of the video here, I wanna shoot the 55 grain VMAX. This is an older box, but these are still bullets you can buy. And as far as I know, they haven't changed them. So these should do just fine. Now the 53 grain VMAX is a boat tail and the 55 grain VMAX is a flat base. So they are very different designs. And the 53 is actually the longer of the two bullets. So I was looking at the maximum overall length with these bullets in my gun. We're gonna shoot 2.260 inches with both of them so they fit in our magazine, but I wanted to make sure that wasn't hitting the rifling and that it was gonna fit. And it looks like the 53, you could go all the way out to 2.375-ish in my barrel. And the 55 was a little bit closer at about 2.350 in that range. So it looks like the 53 will be jumping about 110 thousandths to the lands or 115 thousandths. And with the 55 grainer, we're like 80 or 90 thousandths. For low data, we're going by what's in the Hornady manual. And for the 53 grain VMAX, I wanna shoot IMR 3031. They show a max charge of 25.5 grains. I wanna go up to 25. So our three groups will be 24.4, 24.7, and 25.0. 3031 is an awesome powder. It should give this bullet a really good opportunity to shoot some good groups, I think. For the 55 grain VMAX, the first powder I wanna shoot is IMR 8208 XBR. Hornady shows a max charge of 25.8. I wanna shoot up to 25.5. We're also just gonna do three groups with that powder. So starting at 24.9, working up to 25.5. The last powder that I wanna, that I wanna use with the 55 grainer is Power Pro Varmint. Hornady shows 26.8. I wanna shoot up to 26.5. So that puts us starting at 25.9. The primers will be CCI number 41 primers and the brass is going to be Lake City Brass. Now I'm a little bit short on time. This, this video was a last minute addition to my plans for today. So I'm trying to speed up the loading here a little bit so we've got plenty of daylight out on the range. I've already weighed out all of our charges and we're ready to start seating bullets. So the cases have already been full length resized and trimmed and deburred and chamfered the case mouth and primed. So all we got left is bullet seating and let's get to it. All right, so we're using a Hornady custom grade seating die with their micro just micrometer adjuster thing on top. Our target here is 2.260 inches of overall length. Doesn't feel like we're even touching the bullet yet. Well, we were close. Take it down a hundred thousandths and see where that puts us. Still very long, 2.442. So about 180 thousandths, let's go down 175 thousandths, 100, 150, and 175. See, I get in a rush and I apparently did my math wrong. I'm already short, 2.245. That sucks. So let me back up 15. Actually, let's back up 20. We'll fix that guy later. All right, hopefully that's better. Yeah, 2.263. The next one here is 2.263. So let me dial in three and we'll call that good. Okay, now we're 2.260. The next one's 2.260 and the other is 2.260. So outstanding consistency here. This is a pretty kind of weird setup here because right, this thing seems to have a very long ogive. The bearing surface of the bullet barely makes it up past the mouth of the case. So 2.260 is as short as I would want to go with these guys. And actually the Hornady manual said 2.240. So I don't even know if we've got another 20 thousandths to go shorter to go with Hornady's overall length. Pretty wild setup there. So the one that I accidentally seated too short, I'm going to put it into my kinetic bullet puller and I'm just going to give it a couple pops here on the side of the press. Hopefully that was enough to scoot it out just a little bit. Nope, it didn't move at all. Dang it. All right, let's try a couple more pops. So I've beat on this thing three more times and I think we finally got it moving a little bit. It's out to 2.253. This guy's really not wanting to move. Having to smack it pretty darn hard. All right, 
It's now at the 2.258. I'm just going to leave it just like that and shoot it. And I'll put a little mark on the bullet just so we know which one it is in case it doesn't group with the others after getting beat on like that. So let's move on to our next row. Now this IMR 3031, this is a very full case. I'm not feeling any powder moving. So these are lightly compressed, I think. I'm not hearing any crunching either though. So they're not compressed a bunch. IMR 3031 is a very large granuled extruded powder. So I think it generally compresses pretty well since it's not in there all that compact in the first place, right? Because the granules are so darn big. First one here, 2.265, 2.263, 2.264. I guess maybe it did stretch out the overall length a little bit. 2.264, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down a couple thousandths on the bullet seating die. I guess maybe the compression of the load is affecting it more than I thought. All right, now we got these down to 2.260. Tell you what, these bullets are incredibly consistent. Like the overall lengths, I'm not seeing much variation whatsoever. Yeah, so this last row, now I am hearing a little bit of crunchiness and we've stretched a couple more thousandths still. So let me chase it down just a touch, a couple thousandths, and we'll go with that. I'll tell you what, this second one I seated in particular, got a bit of a ring, a little ring around the ogive there. I think these varmint bullets just have such thin jackets that once you start compressing them, you're going to get a little bit of markings, but I don't think that'll hurt a thing. That was pretty minor. Okay, next is the 55 grainer. Let's back out our seating stem a little bit. Now these are flat base bullets, always a little bit more fun to get started. I'm gonna to have to guide it all the way up into the bullet seating die. And we're shooting for the same overall length, 2.260, 2.323. So we're what, 63 thousandths long. I'll go ahead and move down by 60. Yeah, very close, 2.262. Go ahead and seat a couple more. These are seating nice and smooth though. Like once you guide it up into the die, they're seating right in there, no problem. So there's a 2.261 or 2.2605. The next one's 2.2605. And the last one, 2.262. So just to make sure we don't run into any magazine fitment issues, I'm gonna just bring it down a hair and run them back through and then we'll call that good. I'm getting a little bit more overall length variation here with the 55 grain version. Got a couple of them that are at 2.258, and then the longest one here is at 2.260. Still pretty darn good. Now, if we look at the seating depth of this bullet, you'll see there's uh, you know a fair bit of space between the case mouth and the start of the ogive, a little bit of bearing surface there above the case mouth. So there are certainly a lot of differences here between these two bullets, even though they're only two grains apart. And we've got less case fill here with 8208 XBR and Power Pro Varmint, so I really shouldn't have to worry about the loads getting compressed and stretching out the overall length. I suspect they'll stay consistent all the way across. So that means we're pretty much done here. So let's just go ahead and get out to the range. All right, folks, I think I got enough daylight left to finish this video off. We've got a target at 100 yards with one inch dots on it. Our gun here is an 18 inch white oak armament SPR barrel with a magneto speed chronograph. The upper and hand guard on this upper are from Palmetto State Armory. The scope is a four to 24 by 50 Vortex Strike Eagle. And the lower is a Magpul PRS stock with a standard rifle buffer and spring. The trigger is a LaRue MBT and we're using a Magpul magazine. We are starting off with our 53 grain Hornady VMAX with IMR 3031. The gun sighted in, I did run a couple rounds through it to get it warmed up. The temperatures are in the mid 30s. I've got a mixture of snow and sleet falling on me. So perfect shooting condition. So let's get started here. 24.4 grains of 3031 with the 53 grainer. Let's see if they'll group. Four shot group. Okay, so that is not even close to what I was expecting. A really crappy group. Velocity 2970, that's fine, but the standard deviation of 46.9, extreme spread of 106. That is gross. Hopefully that will improve. Brass looks great. We're moving on. 24.7 grains.
I must admit, I am pretty shocked. I honestly figured we would be shooting tiny little bug hole groups with these. I mean, I guess these groups aren't the worst thing we've ever seen, but I expected much better. All right, last up with the 53 grain, 25.0. All right, that's a little bit better. That's a good way to finish it off. Our standard deviations got better as we went. The groups got better as we went. So maybe there's hope for this bullet after all. Okay, moving on to the 55 grain VMAX, the flat base guy. We're starting with 8208 XBR. This is 24.9 grains, and this will be a five shot group. All right, now that's more like what I'm talking about. The brass looks great, we're moving on. 25.2 grains. So that third shot that went way out to the right felt like a perfectly good shot. The velocity looked right, everything looked right, it just flew away that way out there to the right. I don't really have an explanation for that. But our brass continues to look good, so we're moving on. 25.5 grains is our last charge with 8208 XBR. So our final velocity there was 3072. And with 8208 XBR, our standard deviation numbers just got crappier as we went. But the groups were good. Like I'm pretty happy with those results. So let's move on to Power Pro Varmint. And first up is going to be 25.9 grains. Let's see if the good groups continue. Man, that, uh, that second shot was 3,040 feet per second, and none of the others were any, anywhere close to that. So that might have been a, a loading mistake on my part or something. I don't know. Group's not terribly impressive either, is it? But we're moving on. 26.2 grains is next. So once again, it is our last shot this time, it was 3,066 feet per second, and the next highest was 2,992. So we seem to be getting like these one shots that completely screw up our velocity averages and standard deviation numbers, and the groups aren't terribly impressive. So maybe we're just, we've got the wrong primer for Power Pro Varmint, or I don't know what the heck, because we know the bullet will shoot, right? It got the job done with 8208 XBR. Okay, last up, 26.5 grains. Oh. 
Okay, so that was a completely disappointing showing from PowerPro Varmint. Velocities were all over the place, the group sucked, so I'm wondering whether I screwed up some charge weights, or whether maybe PowerPro Varmint is so temperature sensitive that this cold day screwed everything up. I don't know, let me think it over. Let's get back to the bench and we'll talk it all out. Okay, so we'll start with a look at the brass, but honestly, there's not a darn thing to show you here today. Good looking stuff across all of our loads, not a single pressure sign to show you. So let's not waste our time, it all looked great. Okay, so let's have a look at the groups, and man, thank God for IMR 8208XBR today. It kind of saved our butt, but honestly, our third group there, IMR 3031 at 25.0 grains. That was a 0.546 inch group. That's pretty good shooting. And the standard deviations with IMR 3031 and the 53 grain VMAX started out just awful. 46.9, then down to 28.1, and then down to 12.0. So things just kind of seem to be settling in there as we got a little bit more and more compressed with IMR 3031. So 25.0 wasn't bad. I don't know that I would want to test any more with 3031 and the 53 grain VMAX, but it at least gives me confidence that this bullet will shoot in my gun. So maybe we'll find another powder that matches up a little bit better with this bullet and gives us more consistent results in my white oak barrel. But once we switched to the 55 grain VMAX, everything got great, right? IMR 8208XBR, I'm not sure what the heck happened with that second group. It just kind of strung them all horizontal and opened up to 1.237 inches, but then our third group, it tightened back up into a 0.663 inch group. So we definitely see a lot of promise here with the 55 grain VMAX. But when we switched to PowerPro Varmint, the last three groups, they were all bad. I mean, I guess the first one measured out to 0.976, so that's not the worst thing in the world. But that group having a standard deviation of 64.5, that is awful. Those velocities were all over the place, and it just continued. So crappy groups, super crappy standard deviation numbers. Something was just wrong there with that powder and bullet combination. A different primer and everything might change completely. Another thing is this brass, this Lake City brass that we've been shooting for quite some time here on the channel, this same batch, uh, I think we're at four or five firings. It could probably use an annealing. So maybe we're getting inconsistent neck tension and that sort of junk, which can really make standard deviation numbers go crappy. So luckily th these were the last few pieces of that batch of brass before it's time for me to redo my case prep and you know, tumble them all and resize them all and just do all of the crap again. So maybe this time I'll go ahead and anneal these guys and maybe I'll include it in the next video. But overall, a little bit disappointed in our first couple groups with the 53 grain VMAX, right? Our box that is now empty, we're out of bullets. But that, la that last group, that 0.546 inch group that we shot with these guys gives me some hope. So we may just order another box of these guys. And I guess it would go back to K Mark, who's been commenting, wanting to see these. I guess my question to him would be, what, what, why are you wanting to see these? Are you shooting these and they're great? Are you shooting these and they're having problems? Have you not shot them and you're just interested in how they perform? Let us know down in the comments why you're so interested in this bullet. Because I think it will be a shooter. You know, we just need to find the right powder. And I think they would shoot just great in my gun. But the 55 grain VMAX, I've got very high hopes for that bullet after seeing some of the groups with 8208XBR. I have got a million of these things. My grandpa passed off a bunch of them to me, like this box of 250 is completely full and then I've actually got a couple more boxes. So I've probably got a thousand of these bullets to play with. And if you guys are interested in seeing it, we might just do a couple videos on this 55 grain VMAX and see if we can find the right powder combination for my barrel. Cause I like those groups with 8208XBR. Maybe we could try some Varget, maybe some Benchmark, maybe some AR Comp, heck maybe some H335. The list goes on. We've got tons of great 223 powders that would probably be a nice match for this 55 grainer. So you'll be seeing these more, no doubt about it. Extremely disappointed in our results with PowerPro Varmint. This powder has been impressing me lately and today's results were just awful. 
velocity's just all over the place. So this was my first disappointing outing with Varmint. Hopefully it was just the, the wrong primer match or something. I don't know, but it was definitely terrible. So I think that's it, folks. This was just going to be a quick one. This was kind of an add-on video. I wasn't originally planning to shoot these, but decided to load them up at the last minute, and I'm glad I did. This was an interesting little test. So that's it for now. I will see you guys next time.